Okay. So we're waiting again. We're going to wait for the two minutes so that we can come out. Is anyone on? Can you see? I mean, about four people. Hey, everybody. If you're early, this is my first time doing this, so I wanted to be prepared like a good Boy Scout. So, okay, there's the eyeball that tells me how many people are watching. We're going to wait until the noon hour. Thanks for joining us today. guys are joining us. We're going to start in just a minute, literally. Here's Mike. He's a regular. Love having you on here, Mike. It's pretty fun doing live. When uh, Jason Strickland and I were doing videos this summer, it was all pre-recorded. I know we tried to trick you a couple times. All right, it is noon. I like to start on time, and like a good small group, we should start on time. Today, we are talking about the Next Step Connect. We've been going through our next steps for the last few weeks, and uh, today is Connect, which is small groups. So I'm going to buzz this in just to remind you. Small groups, next steps, that's how the camera works. And today, I uh, got a guest here. He drove all the way from Portland, Oregon, just to do this with you guys. Actually, he's here for some other great reasons. But uh, this is David Greco. He works for Compassion International. And he and I have been working closely together for the last couple of years now with our Guatemala um, church plant. And uh, I asked him, I said, hey, I'm doing this devotion. Uh, would you be willing to join me? And he said, uh, would love to. And we're going to just have a little time of question and answer with David uh, about small groups. So... Uh, thank you guys again for joining us uh, and being here as uh, we move forward on our, our Wednesday noon, literally live, devotion on Connect, uh, one of our next steps, which is small groups. So, uh, David, we had been talking about, uh, of course, we talk a lot about our, this church plant that we're doing in Guatemala. And when yeah. I mentioned this time, this devotion, I said, uh, oh, you said, hey, oh, there's a lot of parallels. There's some parallels with our church uh, plant in Guatemala and small groups. And I wanted you to tell everyone, tell us about that. Yeah, well, so this, this church plant, I know that you guys have been hearing about a little bit and just saw a video from Pastor Carlos a couple weeks ago in your, uh, in your online gathering. Yeah. Um, this church plant actually started from a small group. So there's a, there's a central church in, um, in Coban, Guatemala, and they, there's a, there's a, small group that was meeting in the hills above the city and um, and they were recognizing hey we've got this group of people um, who are growing in um, in, uh, in their engagement with one another in their engagement with their community there's great need in that community so what we're going to do is they're far enough away but close enough that we can uh, that we can plant a church there and so uh, so C3 came along and decided we're going to come alongside that small group that is becoming that's um, so cool. Our, our that's so cool. We we sometimes think that's just kind of a North America thing, mm. and these small groups and becoming a church plant. But it's actually it's so cool to hear that it's happening uh, international. Yeah. Um, can you tell me some other ways that Compassion International mm. incorporates uh, small groups in in their philosophy, in their ministry, and what they do? Yeah. Well, so Compassion is a church based, one hundred percent church based, holistic child development. Program. So we work with kids um, living in extreme poverty in 28, 25 countries around the world, uh, working with a network of 8,000 churches, um, that's and incredible. that's about to be 8,001 uh, or so. It's roughly 8,000. And, um, and so, uh, but the way, the way that we do that, we really actually look at the model that Luke talks about um, when, as Jesus is growing up and developing. So Luke 2.52 says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, favor with God and then with people. And so wisdom, obviously Jesus grew cognitively. Stature, Jesus grew physically. 
But uh, the, I think the way that the parallel works really well in those last two, Jesus grew in favor with God and with people. And so we talk about um, growing um, as, as disciples and then also growing as social, social emotionally uh, with, one, with one another. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, and then also, I mean, when we're looking at kids, we're thinking about how are we making sure that they are known, they are loved, mm. and that they're protected. And I think the parallel there is there's a way that you can be known and loved uh, in a group of thousands, right? Uh, like C3 on a Sunday morning, typically. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but, it's a, but it's not the same as being known and loved in a group. 10, 12, right? right? Yes. You can actually really be known. You can really speak mm-hmm. into one another's lives. And then on that, and then being known, loved, and protected, man, when you really know somebody and you're working with them, caring for them, um, or you can hear what's going on in, in their marriage yeah. and talk yeah. through um, some of the hard things that you're going through, celebrate the good things. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, these, are, these are all things that you can do in a, in a small group setting. Yeah. That's why it's so important. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's so great. Yeah, and you guys know, and uh, maybe some of you don't, you know, C3, um, our, we call it group life here, and uh, we usually start in the middle of September, and I'm working on that now. What is that going to look like with, with COVID still happening and a lot of the rules and mm-hmm. phases and stuff? But uh, a lot of times, well, many of our groups are, are, um, are what we call quarter or semester-based, where they'll just go for about nine weeks, do a study, and then take a break. But we also have groups that like to go a little longer and continue that relationship. They hit it off well, and they will continue on even through our breaks. And, and we're fine with both. Um, I just love the fact that smaller groups get together and have that relationship and are caring for each other. When I hear stories where a uh, meal is provided uh, for someone or, or they went to visit somebody that was in the hospital or uh, however that looks, that's that's what we want. That's doing life together, and that's that's what we want with uh, connect in small groups. Now, uh, David, you work with a lot, a lot of churches, uh, uh, specifically right now in this time here in, in the yeah. Pacific Northwest. Uh, what have you seen personally? How does how do small groups impact you? Oh man, um, uh, yeah, two two great questions there. I <laughs> sorry, I surprised you. Surprised you with that? It's great. Um, well, I mean the. the, the the way that I'm seeing small groups now, I mean, I think churches that have had an active small group ministry going are set up really well in this time of COVID when we don't know right. what um, what we're going to be asked to do by our government by our governments. And and by the way, Scripture says, "Respect your government, be good citizens." I think that the way that we respond to our community, the way that we respond to our governments, actually builds trust. That actually creates on ramps to sharing the gospel with mm-hmm. our neighbors, yeah, right? Yes. When they're perceived as being for our communities. So, so being good stewards, being good citizens, um, uh, I, think, I think impacts our community. But the way that we can do that so well, if we're set up already as small groups, is we can figure out ways. If the, if the, government, if the government's saying, hey, no groups of more than five or 10 can be together, but we're dying to be sure. with one another right, right. and being a part of something that's happening together. Um, you know, at our, at our house, um, We've started. Um, we, my wife and I, Emily, we host a we host our our small group at our church back in Portland, Oregon, and so we've actually started to talk about. Okay, are we ready to start meeting together and watching our online service together as a group? And I'm seeing that happen more and more. Yeah, yeah. Churches in California and Alaska and um, and Idaho, Washington, here uh, where I work, and so um, so that's that's one thing. The way that it's impacted me. Uh, is the other question that you yes, asked, right. which is a great yeah. question. I I grew up, I'm a pastor's kid, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know if there are any other pastor's kids on the, <laughs> on the call right now, but hi to you. Can you wave? Is there a wave? wave? To you. I'm with you. Um, but uh, um, I, I, at some point in my high school years, decided that um, I, was, I was very, very interested in Jesus, mm-hmm. and I wanted to have nothing to do with his church. Um, and there was, as I, as I grew up a little bit, um, I recognized there's no context for those two things to coexist. Jesus necessarily works through his church. Um, there are lots of biblical examples of this, but you look at, um, uh, you know, you look at Paul, Paul's interaction with 
with many church plants, these house right. churches right. that were happening all throughout yeah. Europe and Asia Minor. And then um, you look at the development of the church in Acts. You look at even Jesus's discipleship of, of those three of, of those of those twelve uh, groups, and even like having a group of three that was kind of the center there. Yeah. But it's all happening through relationship, right. relationship, um, yes. and deep a uh, depth of relationship. And so I just I just learned there's no there's no context mm-hmm. for solo Christianity. Right. It's necessarily it necessarily happens in in relationship. And then um, and the. And if you don't, if you, if the second part of the Bible, the the New Testament, isn't going to convince you, you can go back to the very first couple chapters, or actually first couple of verses, and and recognize that the language that's used for God is communal mm-hmm. to begin with. So let us make man. Yeah, that's very good. Um, yeah. It's uh, there. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a pastor and theologian in um, in Eugene, Oregon. He's a professor at a university there, and um, but he's also a pastor. And we were having breakfast about a year ago, and I asked him, "So you're a theologian. When you think about God, like what do you think about? What comes to mind?" And he smiled really big, and he said, "When I think about God, I think about I think about the world's most healthy small group. Mm, so that's Father, right. Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. that is that is fantastic." <laughs> I don't think we need to say much more. <laughs> that was that was great. I want to thank uh, David for joining me, for coming all this way, uh, for getting to do this. And um, we're excited. A little side note, one of the reasons he's here visiting us, he's visiting some of his different churches that he's partnered with. And we're just talking about what does this look like with COVID and, and sponsorship. Mm-hmm. Um, we're hoping to sponsor our children for this church plant. Uh, in the in the coming months, and I don't know what that looks like. So hopefully that will be news coming uh, fairly soon. I mean they're just as much in COVID and in phases in Guatemala as we are. Mm-hmm. So uh, so we're going to see. So be be in prayer. Be prayerful about uh, your sponsorship with uh, a child there, so we can get all those kids in that that started from that small group that come into this uh, church to get sponsored. We'd love that in that whole area. So. Thank you guys for joining us uh, next week. Uh, we'll have a, another special teacher uh, doing our next step, next, next step. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bless you. Great week.